Well, there's a surprise. I've just won 50,000 mm pounds. <laughs> but strangely enough, in paragraph two, I find that I haven't. <laughs> I find that I've only won some numbers to go into a draw. Shame. I didn't even know I'd gone in for the competition. <laughs> no. But obviously I did because my name is on the envelope. Or more precisely, your name, Mrs. Martin Bryce. Really? I'd have these people dragged behind horses over Salisbury Plain if I got my hands on them. Oh, throw it away. That isn't the point. I didn't ask for you to come in the first place. Nobody should know where I live. Well, it'd make it rather difficult for the milkman. <laughs> Pibs. Dear Mr. Price, you have been chosen out of our millions of readers. Here we go again. <laughs> Use the edge of a coin to discover whether you have won a gold-plated Mercedes. Drank behind horses over red-hot coals, I should have said. <laughs> what a nerve. Who do you think I am? Do you know I've a good... Anne, everything all right? No, not really. What is it? It's from the Open University. It's the results of my interim test. I've only got 32 per cent. 32? Let me see that. Fools. Who? This lot. Bits of kids in hairy jerseys and they call themselves academics. <laughs> it's a joke. Well, there is another way of looking at it. What? I'm useless. You're not. You mustn't be. What do you mean, I mustn't be? Well, him next door. <laughs> Golden boy. <laughs> Martin, Paul's already got a degree. Why is it such a victory if I get one? because yours will be newer. Well, I put the idea out of your head, because with marks like this, I wouldn't even get a CSE. Well, perhaps it's a typing error. Perhaps I wasn't up to it in the first place. Perhaps I should have just taken up advanced vacuum cleaning. No. <laughs> stop that. I just stop it. Martin, could you be masterful without shaking? Sorry, love, but I won't have you talking like that. Well, what else am I to say when I realise how thick I am? If they put thick in that, I'll sue them. They haven't. A mark of 32% speaks for itself. Well, I can't understand it. You've watched all your lessons on television, you work hard. I've been doing a lot of rubbing down with emery cloths lately. That wouldn't have distracted you at all, would it? Yes, but only in the evenings. And I'm used to you distracting me in the evenings. <laughs> no, I think it's what they say. I'm just one of those people who doesn't work well on their own. Like the Marx Brothers. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have used quite that simile, but yes. Of course, I've got the residential school next weekend, but that's only for two days. What they infer is that I need somebody to work with. If I could find someone to bounce ideas off. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're looking at him, aren't you? Who? You? It's blindingly obvious. Hells, bells, is that the time? I better be off. We'll start tonight. Two hours every night with me, and the world will look a very different place. Will it, Martin? Of course it will, love. Bye. You know, it's a nice feeling going to work knowing I've set your mind at rest. <laughs> Evening, sir. <laughs> Sit down, Anne, and be serious. We're here to bounce ideas off each other. It's not a laughing matter. We leave laughter outside that door. Yes, I was afraid of that. <laughs> Have you got something in your mouth? <laughs> it's a wine gum. <laughs> oh, Martin. <laughs> Sinners of that sort is going to get us nowhere. Well, it's you who've got the half sucked wine gum in your drawer. And I'm merely trying to establish an ambience of earnest, disciplined study. You're the one who. <laughs> you're the one who will reap the rewards. Well, does it have to be so deadly serious? Uh, yes, it does. And you're not sitting up very straight, are you, Anne? <laughs> uh, I see. It's a challenge to authority, is it? Martin, you don't have any authority. You can't put me in detention or give me lines. We're supposed to be two adults with you as a sounding board. All right, all right. Will you take your feet off my desk now, please? Thank you. Right you are, then. Start bouncing. <laughs> what is our subject this evening? Modern art and modernism. Monet to Jackson Pollock. Yes? Well, I have to write an essay on Jackson Pollock's revolution. 
Yes. And I'm not entirely convinced that he's the gigantic figure that a lot of people think he is. No, I see. <laughs> Martin, you do know who Jackson Pollock is, don't you? Almost. <laughs> well, we saw a lot of his pictures at the Tate last year. Was he that chap who did all those sort of dribbles all over his canvas? <laughs> yes. Now, I don't want to sound dogmatic. Well, he can't but... paint. <laughs> Pardon? I remember saying to you when we stood in front of that one that looked like a load of black and yellow worms. I said, Anne, it doesn't look like anything. It was an abstract. In other words, he can't paint proper things, so he resorts to that. <laughs> it might interest you to know there's a large body of opinion that hold Jackson Pollock to be a seminal force. Yes, well, as soon as they start using language like that, you know what sort of people they are. <laughs> look, this is all wrong. I don't want to know your opinion of Jackson Pollock. I've got my opinion of Jackson Pollock. I just want to clarify it so I can define it precisely. Waste of time, love. The man's a charlatan. He is not. He is. Almost as big a charlatan as that chap with a funny eye. What chap with a funny eye? The chef in the French restaurant we went to. After we went to the French... <laughs> Nouvelle cuisine. Just an excuse to give you small portions. That's all that was. We ate at an Italian restaurant. French. Italian. Now, I know the Italian restaurant you mean, but we didn't go there after we went to the Tate Gallery. All right, when did we eat there? We ate there after we went to see that old French film with, um, what's his name in it? Uh, chap with the big teeth. You oh, know him. Oh, yes, uh, I know. Oh, you know him. Yes, uh, uh, Jacques Tati. Bernard Dell. No, you're wrong, love. No. <laughs> you're right. I remember it as if it were yesterday. He played an escaped prisoner of war. Big teeth. Jacques Tati was a tall man with a trilby hat and a pipe in his mouth and a funny walk. Don't you think the Germans would have spotted that? <laughs> what Germans? In the film, he led a cow across France to avoid suspicion. How could he have been inconspicuous with a trilby hat, a pipe in his mouth and a funny walk? He <laughs> wasn't because it was Fernandel. Oh, sorry. Anyway, why are we talking about Fernandel? Uh, well, I can't quite remember. But it doesn't matter, does it? This is what you meant, bouncing ideas backwards and forwards. Yes, but I meant on a subject that was at least vaguely related to what I was supposed to be writing an essay about. Well, yes, of course. What was the subject again? Jackson <laughs> Pollock. Oh, all right, love. Don't shout. Jackson Pollock. Now, all I've got to do is convince you he can't paint, and you've got something to say in your essay. I... <laughs> what did I say? Of course you can watch my television set. But why? Because ours is on the blink and I mustn't miss the Open University. Well, you are keen, aren't you? I have to be. I only got 32% in my interim test. Oh, thicko. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, I'd better leave you to it then. Thanks. <clears throat> Unless, of course, you fancy a bath. <laughs> this is number one, 1948, a painting by the American artist Jackson Pollock. This work and others like it, in which he criticized in the meantime, the triumph was indeed complete. So, how does a diligent little person like you get only 32%? Well, as you said, I'm a thicker. Oh, come on. It must be something else. Thanks. Perhaps you're thinking of me all the time. <laughs> oh, be serious. I need to talk out loud to somebody. I'm not very good at marshalling my thoughts. Can't Martin help? Well, we did try. He means well, but he will insist on treating me like a first former. <laughs> I keep thinking he'll expect me to turn up in a gym slip. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with men and gym slips? I don't know. I've only just started proper kissing. <laughs> Plus, he's a bigot. He won't discuss anything unless he agrees with it first. You can imagine how far we got with Soviet history. Oh. <laughs> Red flag to a bull. <laughs> You're doing 20th century studies. Yes, that's another thing. I don't think Martin entirely approves of the 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, can I help? Oh, would you? Gladly. If you need a sounding board, sound my board. <laughs> <laughs> Evenings? Well, afternoons would be better. Well, afternoons, then. The uh, health studios aren't ready yet, and I've closed the salon down, so I've got time in my hands. Your place? Oh, no. Martin mustn't know that you're helping me. Fair enough. In fact, if you don't mind, I'd prefer to keep the whole thing hush-hush. Why? Well, you see, people like Harden Hilda, they're so ingenuous. They can't keep secrets. If they were spies, they'd have spy written in their passport. <laughs> <laughs> right you are. It'll be our secret, then. Thanks. Yes, it um, adds a bit of spice, doesn't it? Secrecy. It had better not. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Don't forget the gym slip. Funny way to keep coming to school. <laughs> <laughs>
We've been through all this. You know what the clothes is like. From one front door, you can see all the other front doors. If anyone saw me coming through your front door three times a week, tongues wouldn't wag, they'd burst into flame. <laughs> OK, Bryce Manor, give us your books. Ah. Cap. <laughs> I did ring. Come shopping. Not this afternoon, thank you, Hilda. Oh, all right. What are you doing? <laughs> Up here. <laughs> Wobbly. That wobble Martin's department. <laughs> Just trying to strike a blow for women, really. Howard wouldn't even let me stand on a box. <laughs> Cheerio. Bye, Hilda. That was a close thing. Well, get over here quick. <laughs> You know how there are some people who would laugh if they could see us now. Why? We don't look particularly silly, do we? No, but they think we do. Oh, oh people like those so-called alternative comedians. Les Dawson, that crap. <laughs> boring little grey men on their way home from the office. You're not boring, Martin. And neither are you, Howard, which is my point. We've got them flummoxed. Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> Anne's bucked up, you know. I didn't know she was unbucked. <laughs> oh, different things. Things like claiming somebody can paint when they can't. The last few days, she's been a really happy little soul. Oh, good. Hello, Hilda's at the gate. <laughs> good evening, Howard. Why are you at the gate, Hilda? You're never at the gate. I wanted to talk to Martin. Oh, <laughs> thank goodness for that. For one terrible moment, I thought that you were getting tired of that joke I always tell when I come through the front door. <laughs> That's as funny today as it was 23 years ago. <laughs> They say the English don't show their real feelings. What was it you wanted to say to me, Hilda? We are very fond of you, Martin. Thank you, Hilda. And I'm sure I speak for Howard. You do, dear. <laughs> you haven't heard what Hilda's going to say yet. No, but I'm bound to agree with it. Thank you, dear. When I say, Martin, you know where we live? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. Well, thank you, Hilda. Cheerio. <laughs> what was all that about, Hilda? I just wanted Martin to know that we're his friends and he can always rely on us. Why? Because I fear he's got a great sadness coming. You haven't been reading the tea leaves again, have you, Hilda? <laughs> because I have warned you about dabbling with the occult. Actually seen something. Do you mean you've had a vision? <laughs> no! I've seen Anne climbing over her fence. Oh. <laughs> How is that going to make Martin need us? She was climbing into Paul's garden. Perhaps she kicked a ball over the fence. <laughs> Howard! Paul was helping her down. The civil thing to do, surely. <laughs> and he said. Get over here quickly before anyone else sees you. Oh. <laughs> yes. They wouldn't. It's not a case of wouldn't, Howard. They are. I just can't believe it. Martin was only saying on the way home how happy Anne's been recently. I wonder why. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yes, Martin? This arm round the shoulder business, it's not something that's going to creep in, is it? We're old friends, Martin. Almost brothers. Yes, I know, but we don't want to start slipping down the Parisian slope, do we? <laughs> Sorry. Well, cheerio, old man. No! Howard, you're touching me again. <laughs> uh, sorry. Look, just come in for a bit. We want to talk to you. All right. You'll let me use your phone, won't you, so I can tell Anne I'm going to be late. I wouldn't want her to be worried. Oh! Oh, read again, Howard. Let go of me. Sorry. Dear, oh, dear. Sweet sherry, old man. No, thank you. Rose hip syrup. No, thank you. What about some hyssop tea? 
<laughs> Anne wouldn't do a thing like that. I refuse to believe it. But I saw it with my own eyes. You put the wrong interpretation on it. I'm a woman. What's that got to do with it? I don't know, really. We agonised last night for hours as to whether or not to tell you. Look at Neddy's ears. <laughs> that was us picking at him, that was. Well, I'm sorry about Neddy's ears. And I do realise that you telling me your suspicions was done in the spirit of true friendship. But you've made a basic miscalculation. Anne is a loving and faithful wife. She is! I'm going home. And I'm going to broach the subject of this fence business with her. And I'm sure there'll be a perfectly innocent and logical explanation. Even though it does involve Paul. <laughs> You're not armed, are you? <laughs> what? Because one hears of crimes of passion. I don't do those, Hilda. <laughs> Is that you, Martin? Hello, love. Um. <laughs> Dinner won't be long. Thanks for phoning. Oh, I've been a committee work with Harry Hilda, that's all. Uh huh. Did you have a pleasant day? Terrific. <laughs> Did some shopping. Oh. Buy anything nice? New nighty, very sexy. <laughs> Hilda tells me she saw you up the fence the other day. Yes, she did. What are you doing? Well, I thought it looked a bit wobbly, so I got up to test it for wobbliness. And? It wasn't, it was fine. So I got down and came in. <laughs> Martin! Oh, there you are. Hello, love, just uh, tidying up some papers. Well, I'm just off for my residential course. There's plenty of food in the fridge. You look after yourself and I'll see you on Sunday. Goodbye, Anne. <laughs> are you all right, Martin? Yeah, fine. I won't come outside. I don't like doing things on the pavement. <laughs> no, all right. Are you sure it's all right for me to take the dormobile? Yes, you have the dormobile. You take care of yourself, won't you? Martin, I'm only going to Chichester. I'm not going off to war. <laughs> oh, no, 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 but you'll always take care of yourself, won't you? The older I get, the more care I'll take. And I haven't said many things to you, have I? Well, I wouldn't say that. No, no, I mean, things about what I feel for you. I, I, I haven't said them enough. I meant to, but I haven't, you know. Things. We've got plenty of time. Oh, yes, we've got plenty of time. Are you sure you're all right, Martin? Fine. Yeah, fine. <laughs> well, you better get going. See you Sunday. Goodbye, Anne. <laughs> Bye. Don't be daft. Come in. We just wanted to return your record. I know. But since when have we talked on doorsteps? We haven't come to talk. We've come to give you your record back. <laughs> thank you. Not at all. All right, you've heard Schubert's third. Do you want to borrow the fourth? No, thank you. But didn't you like it? It was very nice. But we don't want to borrow another record. Oh, fair enough. How about a cup of coffee? No, thank you. A cup of tea, then? No, thank you. Well, at least sit down for five minutes. No, no thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Look, what is this? Just returning a record. Well, I must be feeling very vulnerable, because I could swear I could detect a little touch of ice in the atmosphere. We're not interested in your weather forecast. <laughs> and that's Howard speaking. 
I, I realise that. Goodbye. Goodbye. Look, look. If you've got something to say, say it. Very well. We know. <laughs> you know what? You know. Oh, it's going to be one of those conversations. <laughs> um, what do you know? We know about you and Anne. Oh, is that all? Oh! Well, it's hardly a hanging offence, is it? What Martin doesn't know won't hurt him. I can't believe my ears! And to think we took you to the bottom of our close! <laughs> You're like that little beast in the World Cup who scored with his hand and thinks it's a joke. <laughs> uh, what exactly is it you think I am doing? You're having an affair with Anne! Don't be so damn silly. You come any closer and I'll sock you on the jaw. <laughs> well, where did you get an idea like that from? I saw you helping Anne over the fence. And obviously neither of you intended to be seen. <sighs> Look, sit down. No, no thank, thank you. you. <laughs> well, are you standing comfortably? Then I'll begin. I've been helping Anne out with her open university work. We didn't want Martin to know for fear of him exploding into a thousand pieces. And we didn't want anyone else to know for fear of them telling said Martin. <laughs> you can strike me if you want to. Why should I want to strike you? Because we've already told Martin. Oh. If he goes straight for my throat, you two foot the hospital bill. <laughs> I thought you'd gone to Chichester. I had to turn back. Martin was acting most strangely when I left this morning. What's going on here? Martin thinks we're the other two sides of the eternal triangle. Oh, God. How? Why? <laughs> Us. <laughs> Come on, Hilda. We've done enough damage for one day. We must just be a pair of rotten eggs. Or a nest of vipers. Martin! He's not up here. Martin! Well, perhaps he's just gone... Oh. Dear Anne, I know about you and Paul. Perhaps there is a horrible inevitability to it. He seems to win at everything. By the time you read this, I will be out of your life forever. I'm going away. Your happiness is my prime concern. I've put all the insurance policies in the top right-hand drawer of my desk, <laughs> and all the bills are paid up to date. I'll always love you, Anne, and wish you every happiness. I cannot bring myself to write with Paul. All my love and goodbye, Martin. Oh, Martin, Martin. The man's a prince. A loony prince, maybe, but still a prince. What's he want to do a disappearing act for? Where? Where's he gone? Well, there's no clue in the letter. He could be anywhere. Well, we've got to find him. I wouldn't know where to start. Well, you're the bloody golden boy. You have some golden ideas. <laughs> the library? Well, it's just a thought. Yes, I know, but... I don't believe it. He's there. Thank goodness. How did you know? I didn't. You said guess. It just seemed possible that Martin's the only man in the world who could think that his wife's having an affair with the bloke next door, decide to disappear forever, but take his library books back first. You're unreal. Sorry. Thanks. 